is up guys, welcome back to a brand new video, and as you can tell by the title above, I'm going to be going through my entire horror Blu-ray collection. Um, pretty self-explanatory, I think. Um, one thing you should know about my collection is that I don't collect um, movies that I don't like. Like, I always watch these types of videos, and um, I notice like half of half of the movies in people's collections are like, oh, I hate this movie. And it's like, well, why'd you buy it? You know, like, why would I own Halloween Resurrection or, like, Jason Goes to Hell or something like that? Like, I'm just never gonna watch it. So, why waste my money and why waste the uh, shelf space on it? And, um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. So, uh, let's get into it. Uh, starting with, I guess, the numbered movies. Uh, we have 10 Cloverfield Lane. Um, I do um, really enjoy this movie. The ending is a bit whack, but a really cool kind of um, one location type uh, horror film. We have 28 Days Later. Um, haven't seen this movie in quite a while, so I can't really comment much on it. Um, I'm not going to be talking a whole lot about uh, each movie or else I'd be here for 12 years. Uh, 30 Days of Night, one of my favorite uh, vampire films. I remember watching this, um, we had this recorded on DVR back in the day when this first came out, and I just remember watching this like over and over again, so love that movie. A really great premise. Um, might as well pick up both of these. We have both of the 47 Meters Down films. Um, yeah, I really enjoy both of these. Um, yeah, I know uh, the second one kind of got a lot of crap, and um, but yeah, I, I really like both of them. Not much else to say about those, and then we have the Alien films. Uh, we have the first one, which is my favorite out of all of them, my favorite horror films of all time. Aliens, another great movie, and Alien Covenant, um, pretty good. Um, have not, uh, gotten Prometheus yet, which is one I really like, and I still haven't picked it up for some reason. And I do own, um, 3 and 4 on DVD in a collection. As you will see later, uh, I got the original Alien of Horror. Uh, hasn't aged well in a lot of aspects, but still a really damn creepy and effective movie. Uh, one of my favorites from the 70s. Uh, speaking of favorites, my favorite film ever made, American Psycho. Um, yeah, just the most quotable and, um, you know, brilliantly written dark comedy ever. Um, Patrick Bateman, such a fantastic character, and, um, someone that, um, only Christian Bale would be able to, uh, do justice, I think so, so, yeah. <laughs> we have Annihilation, a really cool, uh, sci-fi horror film from a couple years ago with Natalie Portman. Bay of Blood, a uh, really influential um, Italian uh, slasher type uh, giallo from back in the 70s, I believe. Yeah, you watch this movie and you'll uh, notice a lot of uh, kills that were uh, um, later uh, duplicated in some of the early Friday the 13th films. So, yeah, very cool. Uh, one of my favorite um zombie films, and one of the most underrated horror films ever is The Battery. Um, yeah, this movie, this is, like, made for, like, $5,000 or something, and it's just, you would never be able to tell. Some of the acting at some points isn't very good, especially with, like, one character they come across. Uh, but man, beautifully directed, um, just really awesome story. Um, we have Better Watch Out. Uh, one of my favorite uh, Christmas horror films. I love Christmas horror films. Like something about the combination just mixes perfectly. Oh, uh, then we have some uh, Lucio Fulci movies. We have uh, City of the Living Dead, House by the Cemetery, New York Ripper, and The Beyond. So we do have the uh, Gates of Hell trilogy here together. Uh, my favorite out of all of them, I think, is uh, House by the Cemetery. Really love the uh, music and the atmosphere in that one. I'll, I really like all three of them. New York Ripper's pretty good, too. So I like all those. And speaking of Christmas horror, the best there is. My favorite slasher of all time. And one of my top three, four horror films ever made. And that is Black Christmas. Um, 
so influential, so creepy. If you like slow burns, um, with his great atmosphere, uh, this one is, uh, this one's just perfect. Like, um, Ga uh, Halloween, uh, took a lot of its, uh, inspiration from this film. And, uh, yeah, it shows we have, uh, Black Sabbath, a, uh, Mario Bava, um, anthology film. Really good stuff. Uh, we have Black Coat's Daughter. A great movie from a couple years ago. A little bit overrated by some people. Some people were like in the 10 out of 10 range for this one. Um, not gonna, not quite there with, that, with uh, this one, but still great stuff. Uh, Black Sunday. A uh, classic, another Mario Bava movie from the 60s. Another Mario Bava movie, and that's Blood and Black Lace, one of my favorite Giallos ever made. Uh, just so beautifully directed. We have uh, Body Bags, directed by John Carpenter, and I think one of them is done by uh, uh, Toby Hooper. I think one of the stories, but uh, yeah, super fun stuff. Mark Hamill's in this movie, so that's cool. Then we have Brimstone, a... Um, Horror Western, that is absolutely fantastic from a couple years ago. Um, such a great movie. And let's pick up a bunch of them, so I don't have to keep bending down every time I pick one up. Some of the dust off this stuff. Um, yeah, so uh, we have all the Child's Play movies. The first one, good stuff. Uh, the remake, I actually, is my favorite in the franchise. Absolutely love that one. Child's Play 2, also pretty good. Child's Play 3, actually my favorite out of the original trilogy. Curse of Chucky, my second favorite in the franchise. Uh, really cool. And then Cult of Chucky, which is pretty good as well. So, and again, I don't own Bride or Seed because... Why would I? Um, the Burning, classic 80s slasher. Uh, Byzantium, didn't, <laughs> no, I did say, like, I don't own movies I don't like, but I did blind buy this one. I didn't really care for it the first time. It's really slow, um, art house type of, um, uh, vampire movie, but, uh, I kept it because I want to give it another watch, see if I like it, because a lot of people do really enjoy that one, and it was well made, so, hoping that I will enjoy it. Cabin Fever, um, my favorite Eli Roth movie by far, I think. So this is the only one of his movies I like really love. Um, great, great horror comedy. Um, I don't remember ever buying this on Blu-ray. Um, strange. Cabin in the Woods. I like this movie, not nearly as much as seemingly everyone else. Um, but it's a cool movie, you yeah. know. Uh, the original Candyman, absolute masterpiece from the 90s, one of my favorites, and uh, really excited for the remake. Carrie, classic 70s, don't need to say much about it. Um, I don't remember buying this one either. Cat's Eye, I've never seen it either. Um, I think it's an anthology movie, I'm pretty sure, so maybe I'll check this out uh, this Halloween season. And then we have Cherry Falls, um, which is a um, great type of, like, Scream era slasher movie. Uh, really great premise. The killer is um, killing off versions, so you got all these teenagers getting together and having sex to avoid being killed. Uh, super smart and uh, clever. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Ugh. Oh, that was a disaster. Oh, uh, we have Cloverfield. Um, great found footage movie. Uh, Christine. Uh, cl classic, I guess you'd say so. Um, really good movie. Christmas Horror Story. Um, speaking of Christmas Horror. Um, really, really like this one. Didn't really care for it the first time I watched it, but... Um, yeah, just a uh, great Christmas feel to it, and uh, really cool. Another anthology movie, by the way. Uh, Children of the Corn, we have the still book here. Uh, 
Honestly, one of my favorite Stephen King adaptations. Um, definitely in my top three. I absolutely adore this movie. One of my favorite horror films ever made. Just such a great atmosphere. And it's so creepy. Uh, I know this one hasn't aged well um, in some aspects either. Especially at the end with the special effects. But I um, absolutely love that movie. Uh, children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. A uh, really underrated um, zombie flick. Again, has a great atmosphere, actually, um, from the same director as Black Christmas, as I mentioned earlier, and also the uh, Christmas story, so. I think this might have been his first movie, actually. Bob Clark, by the way, is his name. And we have the first two Conjuring movies. You got the first one, Stillbook, uh, one of my favorite horror films ever made. The perfect haunted house film. Don't think it'll ever be topped. But the second one comes close, uh, not, I want to say, not quite as great as this one, but still a masterpiece and still one of my favorite uh, horror films ever made. And then the third one, big step down from those ones, but still okay. I don't, I don't know if I own the third one or not. It had some moments in it, but um, yeah, uh, The Crazies, George Romero, I want to watch this one again. I think I'll like it more because um, George Romero is a director. I think that uh, his movies require multiple watches to kind of uh, pick up on a lot of the themes in his movies and really connect with them. Um, but yeah, this was a good movie. Another George Romero movie, Creep Show, um, awesome anthology classic stuff. We have Crimson Peak, directed by Guillermo del Toro. And, um, awesome, awesome movie. Um, of course, it's Del Toro, so you know to expect creepy haunted house stuff. Cure for Wellness, um, really good horror movie from a couple years ago. Um, can't, I can't remember exactly the premise. I know they go to some, um, I don't know if it's not like, I don't know if it's like an asylum or something like that. They go to this place here, and a bunch of weird stuff's happening, and... I know it's like a slow burn type movie, but I'm really liking it. And Dark Skies, one of um, the most underrated uh, theatrically released horror films of the 2010s. Um, so, so creepy. I This is one you just don't want to watch late at night, honestly. It has uh, always been one of my um, favorites from last decade. Oh, we have a lot to talk about here. A lot of movies. We have the Of the Dead or Dead franchise movies, whatever you want to call them. Um, okay, we'll do this. Uh, we have the Night of the Living Dead original on Criterion and the Night of the Living Dead remake, which the remake is also, you know, great. Actually um, improves on some of the aspects from the original that were a little bit weaker. And the original, of course, is an all-time classic. We have The Dawn of the Dead, original remake. Probably my favorite uh, George Romero movie. And then Zack Snyder's first movie. And uh, also really good stuff. And then we have Day of the Dead, another masterpiece. Probably my second favorite in the original Dead trilogy. And... Don't own the remake to that because, yikes, uh, Land of the Dead on HD DVD. I think, that's found, I think I found this at a flea market. Um, it's a good movie, actually. And then Diary of the Dead. I really like found footage movies, um, so I do like what he went for in this movie. Um, not perfect because it doesn't really feel like a found footage movie to me. So, But I like it. It's good enough. Then we have The Dead Don't Die, a um, really good Zomcom from a couple years ago with uh, Adam Driver and uh, Bill Murray. So, uh, actually has a lot of people in it. Um, Danny Glover, uh, Selena Gomez, Steve Buscemi, uh, Tilda Swin uh, Swinton. So, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> oh my god. Another HD DVD, um, Dead Silence. Um, not my favorite James Wan movie. This one's due for a rewatch, re though. I've only seen it once. It's pretty good, but, um, you know, not my uh, favorite. 
We have Demons, uh, one of my favorite horror films of all time. Uh, basically the Italian version of The Evil Dead. And um, it takes place at a movie theater. So much fun. Great soundtrack. And actually really, really well uh, directed as well. So, great, great stuff. And then we have the uh, House of a Thousand Corpses uh, movies, I guess. The Firefly family movies. I'm not, I'm not sure what to call some of these ones. Um, you got House of a Thousand Corpses. Really good stuff. Devil's Rejects Masterpiece. Uh, these two movies uh, really got me into appreciating Rob Zombie as a director. Too Bad, Three from Hell was very forgettable and, you know, frustratingly, you know, unnecessary because everybody knows that seen this one, the ending to this one is perfect, and they undo it for no good reason, and, uh, yeah, not really happy with that one. Dog Soldiers. An awesome um, werewolf movie. I believe it's an Irish-made horror film. Um, I believe so. But, uh, yeah, it's basically Predator, but with werewolves. So, can't go wrong with that one. Uh, the last up for this little section. We have Dolls. Really, really fun um, movie from the 80s. Um, this would be a really cool one to, like, introduce kids to horror because it is a lot, like, lighter, you know, type of horror film. Nothing, like, too scary, but, um, you know, it definitely has its moments and it's a blast, so. Good stuff. Uh, Don't Breathe. Uh, really good movie. Um, again, probably not as big of a fan as I am as, uh, of it as most people. This doesn't have a lot of replay uh, value for me. And uh, the sequel, I honestly have no interest in. I don't even know if I'm going to watch it, to be honest. Maybe I'll check it out. I don't know. I just, it just really seems unnecessary to me. Dracula. Um, yeah, it's classic. It's great. Drag Me to Hell. Amazing Sam Raimi movie. I know some people don't like this movie, but it's like, if you like Sam Raimi, then I don't understand why you wouldn't. Uh, the Editor. Really good, like, uh, modern day um, Giallo movie. Uh, really good stuff. Really cool throwback. And then we have, to finish out this little sec section, is the Evil Dead films. Um... One of my favorite horror franchises. The original, one of my all-time favorite horror films. Probably in my top five. Well, it is in my top five. But um, just a really inspiring type movie. Just a bunch of dudes going out in the woods and made a horror film, basically. Um, Evil Dead 2, great stuff. Um, Army of Darkness, absolutely hilarious. And the reboot, which is awesome as well. So... Love all these movies. Um, I'm going to go back and get uh, the next stack. So, be right back. We are up with the next part. Uh, starting off with The Exorcist. Um, you know, great, amazing, classic movie. Um, the Exorcist 2. Um, horrible sequel, but as it kind of standalone movie it's kind of interesting to me and entertaining um really like the score in it as well um but yeah as a, a huge step down in quality from the first one and a really bizarre sequel exorcist 3 brings it all around and um is another great movie and a uh the true sequel to the original exorcist and uh this is the screen factory which has the director's cut which I think is the only version I've ever watched, and it is great. And we have The Faculty. Absolute uh, blast of a movie from the 90s. Um, one of my favorites from the 90s. Great stuff. I think it was made in the year I was born, 1998. Um, we have Fear with Marky Mark and Reese Witherspoon. Um, uh, I enjoy this movie. I always remember the scene where... Um, Mark Wahlberg gets hit in the back with a wrench. He has like a big hole, big gash in his back, and he just breathes it off like it's nothing. I don't know why. That scene has always been hilarious to me. And, um, yeah, we have The Fly. I have not seen this movie in ages, so I really can't say much about it. That is the remake, of course. Uh, The Fog, one of my favorite horror films of all time. Um, 
This is the definition of atmosphere and one of the best settings for any horror film ever, in my opinion. Uh, we have The Forest up next, uh, which is a pretty underrated um, theatrical release horror from the 2010s as well. Uh, really great atmosphere, really cool premise. Um, yeah, it's, it's good, really solid stuff. Uh, then there's Frankenstein, my favorite of the classic Universal Monster movies, way ahead of its time. Love that movie. We have Freaky from next from next year, last year, uh, with um, Vince Vaughn playing a uh, teenage girl essentially, and is absolutely hilarious. I absolutely love this movie. Um, the dude who directed this, Chris Lynn something, starts the I think it's something like that. Um, it's somewhere around there. He directed the both of the uh, Happy Death Day movies as well. It's the first one of those is pretty enjoyable. Uh, but I like this one so much more than those ones. Um, you know, I just think this is such a great idea. It's so much fun. And, uh, yeah, it's it's great. I, lo I liked it so much more than I thought I would, honestly. We have the Friday 13th Collection. This is the uh, first eight. Uh, the only reason I own eight is because it comes in this collection or else I wouldn't. Uh, part two and three are my favorites, and I also love six and seven. Uh, I like all of the... Uh, First seven of them. And also I like this one. The uh, reboot of Friday the 13th. Um, yeah. Really cool stuff. Uh, we have From the Dark. A, another Irish uh, horror film. Kind of a really cool uh, take on a vampire movie. Get Out. Brilliant movie. Yeah. Uh, another brilliant movie, Ginger Snaps. Uh, my opinion, probably the best werewolf movie ever made. It's a masterpiece. Um, yeah, amazing, amazing movie. I haven't seen any of the sequels. Need to uh, watch this someday. Um, we have Gone GM Haunted Asylum. Uh, which, uh, the reason I own this is I actually won it in a contest, which is like so rare uh, for me to actually win something like that. And, uh, yeah, it's a uh, cool, you know, pretty decent found footage movie. It's nothing special. In fact, it's uh, pretty generic, but, you know, it follows the formula of, like, a Grave Encounters type movie. Oh, they all go into this, like, asylum and, you know, with cameras and spooky shit happens. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I like found footage movies, so, you know, this one was enjoyable to me. Especially because it was free. And then I won it. Graduation Day. Um, really, you know, pretty cool, uh, 80 slasher, in my opinion. The dude, um, the killer walks around in a fencing outfit and chops people's, he people's heads off with the, uh, sword. Um, speaking of Grave Encounters, we have Grave Encounters 2. I own the first one. I just don't own it on Blu-ray. I'm not even sure if there is a single Blu-ray release of it. I'll have to look at that. But a, a really good movie. Um, not as good as the first one, in my opinion, but, um, really cool how they went all, uh, meta and stuff with it. Um, okay. uh, grab all of these. We have all of the Halloween movies, uh, probably my second favorite horror franchise. We got the original, you know, one of my favorite horror films. Uh, the remake by Rob Zombie, one of my favorite horror remakes, if not my favorite horror remake. I've come around on this movie so much. Uh, I think this movie is actually a masterpiece. Not as good as the original, obviously, but uh, yeah, I just love the whole grindhouse feel to this, and uh, it's absolutely fantastic. And we have the new one, also called Halloween. Yeah, the third movie in the franchise called Halloween. Yeah, great job. Um, but yeah, this was a really good movie. The, you know, everybody's talking about the whole Dr. Sartain twist thing that's absolutely horrible, but the rest of the movie I think is actually really good, and I am pretty excited for Halloween Kills. And we have Halloween 2, the first sequel to uh, the original. Uh, I like this one more than the uh, Halloween. I just... I hate this. The Halloween reboot is what I'll call it. I like this one more than the Halloween reboot as a direct sequel. 
Um, yeah, awesome. Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Um, pretty much everybody loves this movie nowadays, so I don't have to really talk about it. It's like, oh, I actually really love this movie. I do love the movie. But um, uh, people still act like it's such a, you know, out there thing to say that you love this movie. And it's become such a cult classic that it's just like, you know... Oh, uh, you got Halloween 4, great stuff. Halloween 5, um, pretty good. Not as good as the uh, previous ones. Halloween 6, the actual cuts. Uh, oh, no, this is the director's, producer's cut. And we have a double pack of the, the actual cut and H2O. Um, I'm not sure which one I prefer between the theatrical and producer's cut between 6. There's things I like more in this one. There's things I like more in this one. Um, it just depends on which kind of mood I'm in, I'm guessing. And H2O is one of my favorites in the franchise, and what I grew up on, and I admire quite a lot. One of my favorite horror films in general. Next up, we have another franchise, the Hatchet franchise. First one's my favorite, one of my favorite slashers. Second one is a great slasher, too. Um, dude gets, two dudes get chopped in half by a 30-foot chainsaw. Awesome stuff. Hatchet 3, really good. And the newest one, Victor Crowley, really good as well. So, yeah, great franchise. Uh, we have a double pack of Happy Birthday to Me and When a Stranger Calls, the original one. Uh, Happy Birthday to Me is a decent 80s slasher uh, that I'll throw on, you know, every couple years or so maybe. And then When a Stranger Calls, the original one. It's basically a really good beginning and a really good ending, and just a super boring, uninteresting middle. Um, I actually like the remake to this one more. Uh, as far as like the the classics go, I think When a Stranger Calls is one of the more overrated of them. Um, we got Hellfest, a really cool um, slasher from a couple years ago. Kind of, kind of takes place at this like amusement park around Halloween. Um, really cool stuff. I really enjoyed that one. Hellraiser, one of my favorite horror films of all time. You know, great. Uh, don't really care for any of the sequels. So I, I, I like three. I watched two once. I know a lot of people like two, and I just thought it was really weird and didn't really like it that much. And then the rest of them might as well was be one movie because they all blend in with each other. Um, Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer, amazing character study, uh, Michael Rooker just knocks it out of the park in this movie, a really grimy feeling movie, uh, absolutely love it. Speaking of absolutely loving, uh, one of my top three horror films ever made, or of all time I guess, and I think it is one of the best horror films ever made, Hereditary. Um, just, this movie has so much stuff going for it um you know just so many themes it has run through it they just they you know uh connect it they put it into this you know really cool um supernatural movie they just you know it just flows really nice i'm not i don't even know what i'm trying to say this movie just fucking awesome i love it uh speaking of awesome movies one of my favorites house of the devil a kind of uh 70s uh, throwback horror maybe directed by Ty West, one of my favorite horror directors, who's, I think, is directing a new horror movie coming up, and I cannot wait for that. But yeah, House of the Devil, I just love this movie. I've always loved it. That's always been one that, uh, oh shit, almost knocked the entire tripod over. That would have been tragic. Uh, that's always been one that I've, uh, championed, and that, uh, kind of gets, kind of one that you either love it or hate it, and, um, I love it, obviously. Uh, last stack for this little section, we have the House of Wax remake. Um, pretty good, you know. Good stuff. Uh, House on Sorority Row, one of my favorite 80s slashers, my, or standalone 80 slashers. Uh, so charming, so much fun, great setting. I love Sorority House settings for slashers, and uh, yeah, this is great stuff. We have the Howling Scream Factory, and uh, yeah, the Howling, uh, great, great stuff. Um, I actually prefer this a lot to American Werewolf in London. I actually think American Werewolf in London is pretty overrated, to be honest. 
I don't, I used to own it, then I gave it away, I think so. Um, but, yeah, I just, of the two, like, classic, um, werewolf films, I much prefer The Howling. I know you last summer, um, great Scream Era slasher. They're like, people like to hate on it these days, but, uh, yeah, it has some of the best chase sequences of all time in any slash movie. Idle Hands, um, just a stoner movie on, takes place on Halloween, dude's hand gets possessed and he chops it off, it's, it's hilarious, it's great fun time. <clears throat> In the Mouth of Madness, one of the most, um, underrated horror films ever, maybe even the most underrated, an absolute masterpiece in my opinion, uh, directed by John Carpenter, uh, just great, like, great story, um, like, really creepy, like, special effects, Amazing stuff. Highly recommend that if you haven't seen it. Another movie by Ty West is The Innkeepers. Really enjoy this one as well. This is like one of those horror movies that you just put on and it's just like... It just kind of relaxes you. Because it's kind of like these two people at this hotel that's closing down. And it's supposed to be haunted and they're trying to... Um, prove that it's haunted kind of in its final days and it's just really relaxing because it's these two people just hanging out and uh yeah it's really good stuff it's really creepy at times um might as well get these the insidious movies uh love the first one i actually don't own the second one because i don't really like it that much uh maybe on rewatch i will but <laughs> insidious chapter three i love almost as much as the first one maybe even a little more i don't know and then insidious the last key Enjoyed that one as well. Um, Intruder, I spent $25 on this Blu-ray. I regret doing that. I do like this movie. It has some really cool kills. It takes place in, 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 blah, in a um, supermarket. So that's really cool for a slasher. But uh, not worth $25. Uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. You know, one of the best horror remakes ever. Great ending. Speaking of one of the best remakes ever, The Invisible Man, directed by Lee Winnell, uh, one of my favorite horror films from last year. Just near masterpiece, in my opinion. Um, the Invitation, another really underrated horror film. Uh, this one is a masterpiece, in my opinion. It's just, if you're like slow burns, uh, definitely give this one a watch. If you have not seen it, it is fantastic. Then we have all of our IT films, the original miniseries, absolutely, it's, it's great. Uh, the 2017 one, my favorite out of all of them, and IT Chapter 2, uh, great as well. So, all three of them, I really enjoy. IT Comes at Night, um, very mismarketed. It is not a monster movie, it is a psychological, um horror film and it is fantastic so another slow burn but i love slow burns if you could not tell it stains the sands red really good uh zombie film from a couple years ago jacob slider don't remember much about this one i remember really liking him though i know it's some dude coming back from the war i think and he has like ptsd i think so and the last one for this section is jaws it's uh, one of my favorite horror films ever. It's Jaws. Don't need to say much about that. And uh, we have our final, well, four stacks. This is another one up top that I need to get to. Um, which it should be at the bottom, now that I think about it. Um, but whatever. Still got little four little stacks to go. So, see you then. Alright, last section here. Uh, I'm going to attempt to talk about these ones a little bit quicker to get through all these. Um, we'll see how well that works out. Um, should have preemptively picked these up, but without further ado, we have Jeepers Creepers 1 and 2. Um, grew up watching the first one a lot, one of my favorite horror films, and the second one, really good as well. Uh, we're not going to talk about director and his activities. Shit, just did. Uh, Joyride. Um, really cool. Great, kind of underrated um, movie these days. Uh, rest in peace, Paul Walker, as well. 
Krampus, one of my favorite Christmas horror films, amazing. Original Last House on the left, not one of my favorite Wes Cravens, but I appreciate, you know, some stuff in it. The Lazarus Effect, it's a horror movie. I enjoy it. I, uh, Let the Right One In, one of my favorite vampire f films ever. Um, a real masterpiece, just amazing. Speaking of masterpiece, we have The Lighthouse. Uh, for those of you who say uh, Robert Pan Pattinson can't act, watch this movie, please. And, um, yeah, amazing, amazing movie. Another really amazing movie, another masterpiece, The Lodge. My favorite horror film from last year. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Um, yeah, cannot wait to watch this again this winter. War of Illusions, pretty, really underrated Clive Barker um, movie. Really uh, solid stuff. Uh, the Lost Boys, my favorite vampire film ever made. Um, it's The Lost Boys, man. It's just, everybody knows why it's great. Uh, one of my favorite standalone slashers, Madman. Uh, just has really cool atmosphere, really good kills, uh, really cool setting. Um, yeah, I've always loved that one. We have Mandy with good old Nick Cage. Uh, fantastic movie. I absolutely love this one. Uh, really colorful, really violent, really awesome stuff. Great, great score as well. Uh, we have both the Maniacs, the original and the remake. I actually prefer the original one a lot to the remake. The original one, I still like the remake, but I don't really like the whole um, first uh, person point of view from this one. I think that takes away a lot from what a character study is supposed to be with like the main characters like facial expressions and stuff like that. Um, so that's why I do enjoy the uh, original one definitely more. Marabone, really creepy slow burn haunted house type film with Anya Taylor-Joy who's probably my favorite actress of all time. I love her. Uh, the Meg, great fun shark movie. Awesome. The Messengers, this is another one I've watched a lot growing up for some reason, so I have a real soft spot for this one. It's just a jump scare movie, but, eh, I like it. Fuck it. Um, when it is not a jump scare movie, Midsummer masterpiece of a movie, made my top 10 of the 2010s when it comes to horror for a reason. Uh, Misery, masterpiece, you know, uh, Kathy Bates, James Bond. Uh, the Mist, another masterpiece, I think. Uh, the CGI, not so great, but uh, this includes the black and white version, I think so. Uh, yeah, 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 it does include the black and white version, so. Amazing movie, has one of the most frustrating villains of all time with the uh, religious lady. Just want to reach your hands through the screen and strangle her. Um, Motel Hell, great fun, cool movie. Um, Mother! Um, that is how it's written, so that's how I'm going to say it. Uh, very uh, divisive film. I loved it. Um, very artsy, but, uh, you know, it's up my alley. Okay. We have both of these. We have the original Bye Bye Valentine on Stilbic and also the remake. The original one is such a classic 80s slasher. Fantastic. Um, and the remake is pretty good as well. So, as it, f no, uh, we have the New Mutants left, which I loved, actually. Some people didn't, but I did. I believe this stack is next. Yep. Uh, we get it on time. Pretty good, actually. But the Night Train Murders, uh, honestly, like, one of the most underrated horror films ever made. When it comes to, like, uh, like, rape revenge movies, I much prefer this over The Last House on the Left. It has a really great atmosphere, really beautifully directed, and uh, has some really cool social commentary in it as well. The Nun, I dug this one. This is like the only Conjuring spinoff movie that I was like, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I, do, I do like uh, Annabelle Creation a bit too, but I like this one more. But uh, yeah, it has a cool gothic feel. I, I liked it. I don't care. Uh, the Others, um, awesome haunted house movie with Nicole Kidman. Love it, love it, love it. Paranormal Activity franchise, I uh, love this franchise, I've always been a big fan. Actually, one of the franchises that really got me into horror, to be honest. Uh, first one's one of my favorite horror films ever, it's my favorite found footage movie. 
Uh, two is really solid. Three is my favorite sequel. It's awesome. Four, it's enjoyable, I guess. Uh, five is really fun as well. Some really great jump scares. And six, the ghost dimension. <sighs> Disappointing to say the least. The more I think about it though, the more I'm thinking it's like, eh, it's not terrible, but ugh. It's a letdown for sure. Uh, People on the Stairs, my second favorite Wes Craven movie. I adore this movie, actually. Love it. Um, perfect Getaway. Um, I guess I kept it because it takes place on the island, and it's cool, and it has Mila Jovovich in it, so... Okay. We have Phantasm, the original one, Masterpiece, one of my favorite horror films of all time. Uh, rest in peace to both Angus Grimm and Reggie Bannister. Um, got to meet Reggie Bannister. He was a really cool dude. Um, Phenomena. Um, Dario Argento. Ah, amazing movie. Has, uh, Donald Pleasance in it as well, along with the young Jennifer Conley. And, uh, one of the best horror soundtracks ever. Such a kick-ass movie. Uh, Phoenix Forgotten. Um, kind of a found footage movie, alien abduction type stuff. Pretty good. Uh, the original Poltergeist. I haven't watched this one in a long time, actually. But, you know. Uh, Popcorn. Um, awesome 90s slasher movie. Um, always been a favorite of mine. Uh, one of the weirdest, but one of the best horror films ever made. That's Possession. Uh, from 1981, I believe. Um, such a bizarre-ass movie, but man, is it good. Uh, the Possession, one of the most underrated theatrical release tour films uh, of the 2010s. I've said that about five times, but uh, this video, but great atmosphere. I've said that about a thousand times as well. But I love this movie. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He's not playing a uh, killer in that one. Uh, so it's cool to see. I must take out all of these. We have... My favorite horror franchise of all time, the Psycho franchise, the original one, one of my favorites, you know, of all time, of course. Psycho 2, I actually like a little more than the first one. I, I've always just, uh, I actually have the uh, canvas of it hanging up right there, if you guys can see. Um, I just love the dynamics in this movie. I think Anthony Perkins is absolutely hilarious and amazing. And Psycho 3, directed by Anthony Perkins, is great as well. And Psycho 4, the beginning, uh, not as good as the previous three, but I still really enjoy it. So, uh, kind of one of those ones where I enjoy all of them, and uh, we don't talk about the remake, because it pretty much isn't its own movie, so I don't count it as part of the franchise, because it's not a real movie. Sorry. Uh, the Purge Collection, I like all four of these movies. I haven't seen the new one yet, I've heard mixed things about it, uh, but I'm gonna check it out, obviously, but, uh, I'd say Anarchy and Election Year are my two favorites. And we have Pie Wacket, a awesome, um, uh, independent horror film from a couple years ago. Great stuff, a uh, little bit quicker with these ones, try to. Quiet Place, Masterpiece, one of my favorites. Ready or not, great, great movie from two years ago, I think. Turn of Living Dead, my favorite zombie film ever made. Uh, Return of the Vampire, really underrated um, horror film from the 40s. Uh, probably my favorite horror film from the 40s, actually. Uh, the Right, Anthony Hopkins. This one gets overlooked as well. It has Anthony Hopkins in it, man. Like, why don't more people talk about it? Salem's Lot. Um, three hours long, not much replay value, but damn is this one scary. And Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, a uh, really, really cool uh, horror film from a couple years ago. Uh, another one that would be um, really uh, cool for um, to introduce kind of kids to horror, but that one actually has some legitimately really scary parts in it. Uh, shit. Uh, let's see if I can pick that one up, too. There we go. We have Wes Craven's Serpent in the Rainbow. Um, really underrated movie of his. I think this movie is great. It's really weird, but it's great. Uh, Seven, haven't seen it in a while. 
Uh, the Shining, probably the best horror film ever made, one of my favorites as well. Doctor Sleep, great sequel. Uh, Shocker, uh, Wes Craven, awesome movie. Uh, Signs, one of the best M. Night Shyamalan movies, uh, love it. Uh, Silent Hill, the best video game movie ever made. Actually, it's the Silent Hill games justice, I think so. Silent Night, Daily Night, one of my favorite uh, slashers of all time. And uh, one of my favorite horror films in general, Punish! Yeah, great stuff. Silver Bullet, my favorite werewolf movie, I used to watch this as a kid. And it's have some, some nostalgia for it, but yeah, Silver Bullet kicks ass. Sinister, one of the scariest movies uh, in recent uh, memory. Starry Eyes, great kind of art house type movie. It's awesome. Uh, Strangers Pray at Night. I actually prefer this one to the original one. Very unpopular opinion, but uh, I love it. Uh, the original, well, we can do both of these. We have Suspiria, the original, and the remake. The original one, uh, one of my favorite horror films of all time. Definitely in my top ten. Maybe look at films differently. And the remake is a masterpiece in its own right. Uh, again, arguably my favorite horror remake, that or Halloween. Uh, some movies just fell. Which ones? I don't think I need to worry about them for now. Uh, Tell us in the hood. Don't let the cheesy title, um... Fool you, this is an absolute amazing anthology film from the 90s. Probably my second favorite horror film from the 90s. So profound in some of the stuff it says. And the stuff, the sequels just didn't get right with its social commentary. It was, they, those were like very simple. And this one has a lot to say in each story. Um, it's not just, ooh, white person racist, you know, it has... A lot more to say than just that. And um, it's just fantastic. And very, very um, relevant is the word I was looking for. Tales of Halloween. Um, a Halloween anthology movie. It's really fun stuff. Uh, we have Tenere, Dara Argento. Great movie. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Great movie. Um, not my favorite horror film of all time, but I do really love it, and I appreciate it. T TCM2, actually, my favorite out of all of them. Just so much fun. Um, The Thing, one of my top two favorite horror films of all time. Just the embodiment of what horror is. It really is. We have Train to Busan and its sequel, Peninsula. You know... One of the movies where I'm just, uh, which brings tears to my eyes every time I watch it, honestly. Like, I just can't help but ball my eyes out the end of this movie. One of the only movies that can make me cry, seriously. And then Peninsula, great sequel. And I cannot wait for the third one. Really cool to see kind of a, uh, kind of a modern, uh, zombie, uh, franchise going on. And we have Tremors. It's Tremors, man. How can you not love Tremors? Uh, there goes some more movies. Fuck it. Oh, nope, nope, you're staying there. Last couple movies here. We have Trick or Treat. One of my favorite top ten horror films of all time. My favorite anthology movie. Bleeds Halloween. Uh, Vacancy, a uh, really awesome home invasion type movie. It takes place at a motel, though. We've got the Urban Legend Trilogy. I'm pretty sure this only has the first two in it. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, because they're the only two I like anyways. The third one sucks, but the first two, really solid. We have Us, which I actually like more than Get Out. Um, slightly unpopular opinion, I guess, but, uh, just love this one. Actually filmed at the same beach as from the light, from, not the lighthouse, the Lost Boys. <laughs> God, I own this one. Van Helsing, another one I grew up watching. This one's just so much fun. Uh, and plus I love Hugh Jackman. Uh, Videodrome, it's David Cronenberg. Uh, not really my big fan of his movies. This one's, you know, it's pretty decent. It just has no replay value at all. Uh, one of uh, John Carpenter's most unfairly hated movies, and I think it is his most unfairly hated movie, Village of the Damned. Um, I've always really dug this movie. Um, I think it's creepy, and it's cool. The Void. Awesome 80s throwback uh, from a couple years ago with just out, uh, insane practical effects. 
Um, great throwback to like some uh, John Carpenter movies like The Thing and also uh, Hellraiser, Clyde Barker as well. Thing of John Carpenter, we have The Ward. Uh, one of his worst movies for sure, but uh, I like the setting, I like the premise. Just has some really lame jump scares in it, and it's pretty disappointing. That uh, I hope he makes another one, because it would be a shame if that was his last movie he ever made. We Are Still Here, really cool haunted house movie. I haven't seen this one in a while, but I know this one's very violent, so good stuff. Original Wicker Man, uh, very strange movie, but really great movie. Um, but yeah, awesome. The Witch, uh, one of my favorites of all time. Just the definition of haunting. Um, without warning, it's like a really cheesy alien movie from the 80s, but I enjoy it. Uh, the Wolfman, classic um, universal stuff, really good. Uh, the Wolf of Snow Hollow, uh, great horror comedy from last year. Uh, really enjoyed that one. Uh, the First Wrong Turn, uh, really enjoyed that one as well. Really enjoyed the uh, new one as well. Um, kind of a different take on it, I guess. We have your next uh, really kick-ass movie, which is probably the most kick-ass final girl ever. I would not want to fuck with her. And last, but probably least, I guess, is Zombie 3. That is the sequel to uh, uh, Lucio Fulci's Zombie. It's technically it's Zombie 2, but then Dawn of the Dead supposed to be Zombie. It's very fucking confusing. This is the sequel to Zombie. I like it. It's enjoyable. It has some good colors. Yep. So, I believe that's it. Yep. Those are those ones that fell from earlier. So, yeah. That's my entire horror Blu-ray collection. Um, you stayed through the whole thing. Um, congratulations. You are awesome. So, uh, yeah. That's going to do it. I have my non-horror Blu-rays still left to do. My horror DVDs. And my non-horror DVDs. I got some shows. A lot of stuff to still show off. And they'll be coming in the near future. Probably. I'm going to do them eventually. I just don't know exactly when. I might do some videos in between. But yeah. Uh, there you have it. And um, yeah. I guess be looking forward to that stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one.